Welcome, welcome to Trace Church. So glad that you guys chose to worship with us on this Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to everyone here. We are going to continue to worship. We just want to invite you and encourage you to enter into this thin space that we create between you and God. So just enter into this space and just take a time to take a breath. Let your soul and your spirit and just your emotional reservoir just to be, just to be filled up. 
And so we are going to sing some songs. I, again, encourage you guys to sing with us. And if not, if you just want to let these words pour over you and just minister to your heart, I encourage you to do that as well. So will you sing with us? It's a song called Hark the Herald.
time. What a great evening it's been just worshiping with you guys here in the room. Uh, I've missed it. I sure hope you have too. Will you pray with me this evening? Father, we thank you for that holy night, that day when Jesus humbled himself as a child and entered this world to live a life 
and grow up to be a man, to be obedient on a cross, but then overcome sin, overcome death, to be risen again for us. So we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his life. We thank you that we are found in him. It's in Jesus' name. Trace, that was a holy moment for me. I don't know if you experienced that too, but I believe that there are spaces in this evening where you will be able to experience holy moments throughout our worshiping together. If you're a guest with us today, please know that we are so thrilled that you chose to spend part of your Christmas Eve with us at Trace. Thank you for spending that time here. If you call Trace home, I want to remind you guys of our year-end giving. We were able to accomplish some really incredible things, even through a really crummy 2020, and that is because of your generosity. And we want to continue to do those things in 2021. There are three new ministries launching here at Trace, and I'm so excited, especially about women's ministry, because that one's personal to me. But we're excited about men's ministry and our stewardship ministry that's starting in 2021. So head to our website or on the app and join us in generosity so that we can really make an impact on our community here in Colorado Springs. I also want to remind you that this Sunday, December 27th, we're gathering differently. We won't be here in the building, but we will have a devotional available for you and your family. So enjoy your time at home and we'll gather virtually together, but won't be in the building. So please don't show up. I'm going to pray for us and then let's continue worshiping together. Lord God, what a beautiful night you've given us. I thank you so much for every person in this room. I hope that you would remind us through this evening together that Jesus is the gift. We thank you so much for sending him to take our place, to do what we could never accomplish ourselves. Lord, we love you. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Merry Christmas. Guys, I'm serious. I can't tell you how awesome it is to see your faces, the fact that you're in this room. I think it's something that we took for granted. Amen. And so anybody else, can I just hear from you if you're excited to actually be in person and be here with us? Can I hear from you? Yeah. Honestly, leading up to today, we didn't know if this was going to happen. We didn't know if we were going to be able to have in-person services. And there's been a little bit of controversy even around churches that have decided to do in-person Christmas Eve services. And maybe you heard some churches or some church leaders that said, hey, you know what? We're going to exercise our First Amendment right, freedom of religion. And that's great if that's the position and posture that they want to take. But I need to let you know that's never been our posture. Like our desire and our hope to have in-person gatherings is because we want to do everything in our power to point to hope. We want to do everything in our power to lead people to the cross, to allow you to have a moment with Jesus. And we know you can have that outside of here, but I believe there's something special about us gathering together. And if I can be honest with you, um, I did my best to try to greet every single one of you coming in today. And I remember asking one lady, I'm like, hey, how are you doing? And I think her answer probably speaks to why it's so important that we are together today. She said, I'm not sure. And I really appreciate that honesty because I think that'd probably be echoed by more people than probably what you're willing to admit. How you doing? I'm not sure. And so maybe in a season where so many things have been taken away from us in a thing, in a season where there's been so much discouragement and despair, we wanted this to be something that you could depend on. Because we're not gathered here today to celebrate a holiday. Listen to me, we're gathered here today to celebrate a promise. A promise given to us through the Christmas story. And so here's what I want to do. I know there's, there's a lot of things that we could probably put on a list of things that have been taken away from us this year, things that we feel maybe have been a big discouragement. And I get it, we all have that list. But can I ask you, to, can I ask you just to set that aside briefly? Because we really do. I mean, it's been our prayer for you. It really has for several weeks now that this would be a moment for you, a holy moment. If you go back and read through some of the Psalms, you'll find times where people feel closer to God in stillness in silence. And so we're going to give you some of those moments today as well. But when we come back to the Christmas story, there is a specific agenda that I have today. I don't need a lot of words and I don't need a lot of time. And I'm going to tell you what it is here in just a few moments. But before we get to it, I just want to pray. I want to pray that whatever you need from God right now, that he would give you, he would give you a moment. He'd give you a word. He'd give you a sense of his presence, of hope, of grace, 
whatever it is that you need. So I'm going to pray for that right now. I'm just going to ask that you pray with me. God, uh, tonight, it feels different. It feels different than other Christmas Eve services. And so, Father, uh, I know that there's a lot of different stories that are walking in through those doors today, and many of those stories probably do represent some discouragement and despair. And so, Father, I pray that you would use my words, but more importantly, you would just use your Holy Spirit to minister to people in here, God, that we would come back and we would find hope and reassurance and even restoration in the Christmas story. So, God, we invite you to do that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Well, I'll be honest with you. I'll give you a moment of transparency really quick. Leading up to this particular service every single year, the Christmas Eve service, there starts to, to grow within me some tension and a little bit of anxiety even uh, because every year uh, as, pe- pre- excuse me, as preachers, and I've got a lot of preacher friends who would echo this, like we feel like we've got to preach the same message. It's the same story. I don't know if you know this. The Christmas story never changes, but we feel kind of some pressure that we want to preach it in a unique way. And so as this service kind of gets closer every year, I start to feel that tension. It's like, how am I going to communicate the same story in a different way? But here's something I would tell you. I didn't feel that tension this year. This year feels different. This Christmas, it feels different. And maybe I could illustrate it in a small way, in an elementary way, by asking you a question. Give me some crowd participation. How many of you either put out more Christmas lights this year or you put them out sooner? Just raise your hand. Let me get some crowd participation. You put more out or you put them out sooner? Yeah, many of you. Many of you. And why do I even break that up? Because there's something about Christmas that creates within us an anticipation. We anticipate this moment in time. And I believe we anticipate this moment in time because There's something about the Christmas story that causes us to kind of remember something. It could be remember memories. It could be remember family, you know, traditions. But it makes us go back even further and remember what God actually did for us by sending Jesus. And in that anticipation, I believe it causes us to want this moment to come sooner. And maybe that's why this particular Christmas, I don't know if I would necessarily say it's more special, but I do believe believe it's more important. This year threw a lot at us, guys. This year threw a lot at us. 2020, I mean, if you were to write down like the major events that transpired this year, it would be a long list. And not only did a lot of big events happen, but it feels like they all happened at once, causing us to kind of step out of this moment in time, thinking like, what just happened in in our processing through it all and trying to reason with it all, I believe There's a question that has likely surfaced in our mind, even if it was subconsciously, and a question that's really simple, it's simply this, what is reliable? Like in a season and in a year where so many things that I thought were a little bit more certain than they were actually, and things that I thought were a little bit more reliable than I realized they were, what is actually reliable? And that's why I think this particular Christmas is more important. Because in a season where so much was taken away, in a season and in a year where so many things started to feel uncertain and shakable, guys, the Christmas story represents not a holiday, but a promise. And the promise it represents is one of the most consistent truths that our life can depend on. I can wrap it up in one word. More importantly, I can wrap it up in one name, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, that God, he's with us, no matter how dark the world around us feels, the story of Christmas, the name Emmanuel, it's not a holiday, it's a promise, that God, he's with you. We first see this kind of come on scene in Matthew chapter 1, but he's actually quoting from Isaiah in Matthew 1, 23. It says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. He's with you. He's with you. Listen, I know it's been a difficult year. For some of you, you maybe got more than your fair share of discouragement and despair. Maybe you stepped into this year with a lot of lofty goals and ambitions only to step out of this year with a limp. 
Maybe you got the virus. Maybe you know someone who did get the virus. Maybe you lost someone that's really close to you this year. Maybe. Maybe you felt forgotten. One of the reasons why we've been dropping these little guys, these are what we call our quarantine care kits. One of the reasons why we've been dropping these little guys on front porches across this city for the last four to six weeks is because we know it's a lot more than just a little bag of goodies. You see, what this represents to a lot of people, to most people, is that they were thought of. You see, when we bring this little bag and you put it on the front porch of someone and they come out to see it, they're immediately thinking, someone, someone thought of me. And I think we would all be surprised how much hope actually comes with the notion that someone thought of you. Now, we had many of these bags that we were ready to give you tonight to pick up one as a family and take it to someone, but we actually already ran out. This is the last one, so if someone wants it, you can come and grab it for, uh, from me before we're done today. Friends, the story of Christmas is God thinking of you. You. Not the world. Don't make it so big and broad. The story of Christmas is God thinking you thinking of you. The story of Christmas is God saying, hey, I'm for you, and listen, don't miss this, I am coming for you. The story of Christmas is God saying, hey, you're worth it. The story of Christmas is God reminding us that this pain that we experience in this life, it's temporary, because his rescue plan to send Jesus to us gives us the promise that one day we will have an eternity of peace, and I promise you, your minds can't comprehend that right now, but we find hope in the promise, Emmanuel, God is with you, and God is for you. God is with you, and God is for you. Now, if you're new to all of this, I want to communicate something to you that might sound a little bit discouraging on the front end of all of this, and uh, I apologize for that, but I just want to I want to say it the way that I feel like I need to say it because it's truth, but I'm going to back it up with a lot of hope. And so let me say the discouraging piece up front. And here's what I would tell you. You have a 100% chance of being infected by sin. 100%. But through God's plan, Emmanuel, that he is for us and that he's with us, that God thought you were worth it enough that he sent his son to come. And because Jesus came to this earth and brought with him the promise of eternal life, you now have a 100% chance of receiving grace and forgiveness, but you have to invite him into your life. And it's not lost on me that some of you may be here today, and you're here not, <sighs> not at your own choosing Maybe you're here because you felt guilted into it or you're coming here to appease a family member. And if that's you, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. I'm just trying to let you know that I know you're probably here. And maybe it's for somebody watching online at a later date. You kind of fell upon this sermon somewhere on YouTube or something and you're listening to this. And I don't think that's by accident. I think God may have put it on your playlist from some, for some random reason. And if that's you, listen, I need you to hear this. You are never too far gone. Listen, you are never too far gone to re receive the grace of God. Let me say it differently. You are the why. You, make it personal. You are the why that Jesus came to die. Can I say it again? You, you are the why that Jesus came to die. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God is with us. God is for us. I don't need to use a lot of fancy words today. Our greatest hope for this sermon is that you would leave here today and go back into your homes. And I know that not everybody's Christmas is going to be the way that you maybe hoped that it would be. But my hope is that this name would take on new meaning in your life. Emmanuel, God is for you. And God is with you. God thought you were worth it to send a son into this world. To take the punishment that each and every one of us deserved, but he took it upon himself. And again, I know there's probably somebody in here right now, and maybe you're kind of thinking to yourself, Aaron, that sounds great, but you don't know me, and you don't know what I've done. And so to tell me that God is still with me, <laughs> to tell me that God is still for me based on what's going on in my life, it's not possible. Maybe you, some of you share that sentiment. I mean, maybe this was a year where you started doing some stuff, because it was a tough year. 
Maybe you started doing some stuff that you know right now you need to stop. Maybe you stopped doing some stuff that you know you probably need to start. Maybe you lost it on your spouse. Maybe you lost it on your kids. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a loved one. This has been a year full of despair and discouragement. I get it. Emmanuel. God is with you. And God is for you. You know what that doesn't say? It doesn't say that God's going to take it all away. It doesn't say that God's going to remove every point of pain in your life. He never promised that. If anything, he promised us struggle and persecution. That's what he promised us. But he also promised peace. Don't miss it. The story of Christmas is also the promise of peace. I think it's best said by the Apostle Paul when he's writing from a jail cell, and I think you need to know that, that understand that context, because imagine what he would have been experiencing. So for Paul to say what he's about to say from a jail cell probably should give it some merit. He says, guys, listen, listen. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, don't miss it, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart. Does anybody else feel like they need their heart guarded sometimes? The peace that transcends all understanding. You know what that means? It means when we were to, if we were to look at the circumstances around our life sometimes, we would conclude there is no way that I should find peace in this moment. I mean, look at what I'm dealing with. Look at the darkness that is surrounding my life. Look at the discouragement. Look at the despair. There's no way that I should have peace in my life. And you might be right from a worldly perspective, but this is a kind of peace that transcends all understanding. And so sometimes there's those moments where you're telling yourself, you're giving yourself every reason and excuse to not have peace, and God's trying to fill you with it, and you just need to grab it and hold on to it. It's his promise. He didn't promise to take away your pain. That's not the story of Christmas. But he did promise that he's with you, that he's for you. And no matter how painful life is for you right now, you can still have peace. That's the story of Christmas. Think of it this way. In a time where we have been told to keep our distance, right? Stay, stay apart. Make sure you're not getting too close to each other. Keep your distance six feet apart. The irony with that in the Christmas story is that God did everything, don't miss it, he did everything in his power to close the distance between you and him. Think about it. He did everything in his power to close the distance between you and him. And listen, Jesus is proof of that. The fact that Jesus would take a step out of heaven into this earth I could potentially even argue that that was a harder step to take than going to the cross, potentially. That stepping out of heaven into this earth with the humility and innocence of a baby, I would suggest could even have been a bigger step for Jesus than what he had to endure on the cross. Maybe, maybe. But you were worth it. You, you, you're worth it. Emmanuel. God is with you, and he's for you, and I need you to hear it. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to say, God is, and you say with me, God is, and then I'm going to say, God is, you say for me, God is. Let's do with me again. God is, say for me, and God is, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. The promise of Christmas, that our God, he's with you. And he's for you. I want to read to you a passage from the Gospel of John in the very beginning. And this necessarily isn't a Christmas passage, but if you listen to it, I think you'll actually see some Christmas components in this particular passage. It's something, it's probably one of my favorite passages. The team here would tell you every time I get up here on Sunday morning and we do a mic mic check, I quote this particular passage. And I want to read it to you right now. John says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in 
the beginning. This is talking about Jesus. And through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Can you sit on that one for a second? Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. You know what that means? It means you were not made on accident. No one is accidentally falling through life right now. God created you on purpose and with a purpose. No matter how your story reads up until today. Can I say it again? No matter how your story reads up until today, that God created you on purpose and for a purpose. And nothing about your past, nothing in your rearview mirror dismisses you. Let me say it differently. You can never be too far gone to receive the grace of God. Emmanuel. You were worth it. God came for us. Think about it. God came for us. He came for us because he's for you and he's with you. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. How are you? I'm not sure. No matter how dark the world feels around us, no matter how dark, I hope you can bring, I hope you can find some hope in this today. I really do. No matter how dark the world feels around you, it will never extinguish the light, period. No matter how dark, and I know for some of you, you're like, oh, Aaron, if you just knew what I was dealing with, I don't know, but I I know where, where you're coming from. The darkness will never overcome the light, Emmanuel. God is with you, and God is for you. For those of us who follow Jesus, the Christmas season, when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, it's a grounding moment for us. It's a moment where we pause to reflect on the redemptive story of God. It begins with Jesus stepping out of heaven and taking on flesh. This is where we get this idea of the incarnation. And he begins his 33 years of life that will ultimately lead to his crucifixion and more importantly, his resurrection. And every year we take this time to celebrate, to contemplate that Jesus came for us and we revere him as our king. And today we gather together, again, allow this to kind of soak in. We gather together with Christians all around the world. And we echo something that we already sang a little bit earlier today. And I'm not sure that this lyric that I'm about to share with you has ever been more true collectively for our lives up until this point in our life. A weary world rejoices. Why? Emmanuel. Our God, he came for us. He's with us. And he's for us. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming and has come into the world. Father, I pray, we pray, that you would remind us today, this evening, this Christmas Eve, why we celebrate. God, that no matter how dark our world feels right now, that we know that it will never extinguish the light. In just a few moments, God, we're going to sing a song, I think that reminds us of this probably better than anything else. And so as we light candles and as we sing together, God, would you remind us how much you loved us, that you sent your one and only son, and if we'll just believe in him, we'll have everlasting life. God, would you continue to illuminate the light inside of us so that we can extend hope to others when life hurts. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David... He had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, 
because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Silent 
you pray with me? Father, our prayer is that this has been a moment, a thin space, where we feel your presence and we're reminded of your presence and reminded that the darkness will never overcome the light. Father, today we're reminded that your promise comes with a name, Emmanuel. You are with us, that you are for us. Father, I pray that you would fill each and every home that's represented in this room with joy and love and hope. It may not be the most ideal Christmas, but it is important. So Father, may we, may we be reminded of the most important things in our life, the truths that we can rely on, beginning with Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. Merry Christmas. As you leave today, uh, we have a little something for you. Feel free to grab a bag. Some of the bags have coffee in them. Some of them have hot chocolate. Just a little token of, for, from us to say thanks for joining us on Christmas Eve. In just a few moments, I'll ask you to blow out your candle and just obviously uh, removing your mask for a moment to blow that out, and then you can put it back on. I also want to remind you that next week we are gathering differently, only online. But the last thing that I want to let you know of uh, I think could be very important. I know for some of you, this has been a very difficult season. And as a church, we've been saying that we're for you, that we're here for you. We're family. We want to take care of you. We want to extend hope when life hurts. And so don't hesitate to reach out and let us know if there's greater ways that we can partner with you through this difficult time. We also want to let you know that you don't need to be in a hurry today. We've got communion stations around the room if you would like to celebrate with the Lord's Supper today. We'll play some soft music in the background and feel free to just hang out and pray and celebrate with communion. Um, again, don't feel in a hurry. We'd love for you to have that space if you need it. So let me do this. Let me pray for us one more time and then we'll be dismissed. God, thank you again for who you are. Thank you that this is not a holiday. It's not just about time off from work or school. This is about a promise. Father, we thank you for that promise. We thank you that promise comes with a name and that name is Jesus, Emmanuel. Father, thank you for every single person and family that's represented in this room. God, would you Allow them to be blessed with your favor and grace as they leave. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you guys. Merry Christmas.